joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is cool beans. I'm Elizabeth and as usual I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie tell us about your cool beans recipe. Okay well I feel like I went a little weird with this one. I definitely originally intended to make falafel. I still have not tried doing that. So that's a goal. But what I did was I made black bean brownies. Mm. And this recipe is from a website called chocolatecoveredkatie.com. And I guess that this isn't like a terribly unusual thing to do to put black beans in your brownies. But this was definitely the first time that I'd ever seen it when I came across this recipe. Um, what I really love about this recipe is that all the ingredients are pantry staples. So it's like everything that's in here, I usually have. So it's a can of black beans that's drained and rinsed, two tablespoons cocoa powder, half a cup of quick oats, some salt. And then this recipe gives you some options for how you want to sweeten the brownies. So I think that's pretty cool too. You can use a third of a cup of maple syrup, honey, or agave. So I chose honey. And then it says you can use a pinch of uncut stevia or two tablespoons of sugar or omit that entirely and increase the maple syrup to a half a cup. I had a different kind of sugar substitute. So I just used that and followed the instructions on, on the package of how to substitute two tablespoons of sugar. And then you can use either a quarter cup of coconut or vegetable oil. I used coconut oil, two teaspoons vanilla extract, half a teaspoon baking powder, and then half cup to two thirds of a cup of chocolate chips. I love chocolate chips in brownies. So I definitely went with two thirds of a cup. Um, and I did, and then it says, optional more chips for presentation I say not optional definitely more chips um one thing that I did find when I was going for all of my pantry ingredients was that I was low on chocolate chips so I used some mini chocolate chips that I had stashed away and just used a combination of both and they worked great Another thing that I love about this recipe is how simple it is to put it all together so you take all of your ingredients except for your chocolate chips and put them in a food processor and you just process that until it's smooth and then you take the blade out and just stir in your chocolate chips that's your batter and so you pour it into an eight by eight greased baking pan and um, optional top it with some chocolate chips not optional for me so I also added some white chocolate chips on top because I just think that white chocolate chips on brownies is visually very appealing. So I did a little combo on mine. Um, bake for about 18 minutes and then pull it out. And you can see my picture of them right out of the oven here. And you let it cool for at least 10 minutes before trying to cut is what the recipe says. Um, I would say only do that after 10 minutes if you're really into like the ooey gooey sort of brownie because it's really not going to be a very firm brownie at that point. What I like to do because I like a firm brownie is to let it cool about a half hour and then put it in the fridge. The first time I just left them overnight and then the second time I made these I just left them for a few hours. And it was great It just firms your brownie up enough so that if you like that texture a little bit better. And it, it holds them together better too. So if you're gonna, you know, transport them later or something, um, refrigerate them first before you cut. Um, overall, these are really good. I, yeah, I made these like a couple of months ago when I first came across the recipe. And then as we were getting closer and closer to filming this, I was like, geez, I need to make this again to make, be sure that they're as good as I remember. So I actually ended up making them yesterday and they are, they're just really, 
really tasty little brownie and my husband really likes them too. So a hit in this household. How does the, okay, wait, two questions. First of all, they're vegan. Yes. So I think you, they would be, if you make sure your chocolate chips are vegan, that's oh, the only right. point where I feel like if they were milk chocolate chips, you know, just check that. And then, um, tell me, like, does the bean flavor come through? Like, what do you, what's the deal with that? I knew you were going to ask that. No, you cannot taste the beans in this. And I think it's because you have so much cocoa powder. It's two tablespoons of cocoa powder. So that chocolate flavor is just really intense. Uh, and also, I love that you, you'd be eating protein, protein in your brownies. Yeah, it is a healthy version. Like I was looking at the comments on this recipe and all the people were like, oh, well, it's still got a bunch of sugar no matter like what you do. But, it, you know, you're not it's not a perfect healthy brownie, but it's a healthier brownie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say there was flour in it? No flour. There's no flour. OK, that's yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's very cool. I'm going to have to make that. I say, I know I say that all the time, but that one's <laughs> like easy peasy. Yeah. It's very simple. I do hope you try it. Oh. Beth, tell us what your cool beans are. Oy vey. So I, I really, really, really wanted to try making beans from, you know, dried beans. So I, I I'm not even going to go into all this recipe because it was, it's a black bean ragu. Um, and I did cook the beans for three hours, like it said, and they just weren't done. So I scrapped that. Uh, they do rear their little bean heads in another episode. <laughs> um, but uh, I just, I decided since I had just pulled out, I got this grist. I know you, I think you guys have talked about it. I got it on express. So, um, found a very simple recipe, smashed garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. smashed garlic and garbanzo beans soup. And it said, use any place you'd want smashed potatoes or creamy beans. So I was like, you know what, that sounds pretty good. And then I guess the whole po thing about this book is that every little recipe, there's several variations in it. So it, um, so I tried it. And at first, it's just like, I use two cans of garbanzo beans, a pinch of salt, and then I use like six cloves of garlic, it calls for four to eight. And then a couple, two ounces, which is really like four tablespoons of butter. So I, you fry up with a bunch, with olive oil, fry the beans and let it like sit there for a while. And I was like, creamy, what the heck? This is not creamy. And I thought it was gonna be another disaster. Um, but I followed it through and as it was so simple and so tasty and it was creamy beans. So, you know, you, you end up um, frying them and then you let them sit for a little bit. And you, when you add the garlic, um, just let it brown up and crisp. And then um, I ended up putting it on a bed of arugula as a salad, but some of the other variations are with like a fried egg or add grilled chicken, uh, different sauces, but it was super good. And then I was on my own while well, Kurt was out of town. So I was happy to make something like that for dinner and it was really good. And the next day though, I had leftovers. I have a picture of this as well as the, the pan of beans. Um, I added feta cheese and a vinaigrette and it was really a delicious salad. And, you know, Kurt left this morning. He's like, I'm putting some of those beans on my salad. I hope it's good. And I was like, why wouldn't it be? So, um, yeah, that was so smashed garlic garbanzo beans, super simple and tasty. Yeah, that sounds good. I love the flavor combination, the garbanzo beans, garlic, feta, yeah, arugula, all you're just ticking my boxes. So that, you know, that sounds amazing. Oh, I also, the first night I squeezed lemon juice on it, which again, yeah, yeah it's all, sure. all together. So uh, yeah, it was yummy. It sounds super I, good. I love it. It's yeah, like it's, a perfect, easy lunch, whatever. Really, really is. It's like, yep. Just sound. It's so basic. Just a couple cans of garbanzo beans, but man, I was really impressed. So anyway, Katie, 
no, it's <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Katie, we don't want to hear yours again, but Elizabeth, <laughs> what did you prepare for cool beans this time? So, okay. I made a recipe last week for um, tortellini pesto soup with cannellini beans. It was delicious. Then I got to thinking that I really wanted to take cool beans literally, and I didn't want to make a hot recipe because it's warm out now. And I was just like, I, I just, it was, the soup was good. Maybe I'll talk about it another time, but the beans also weren't the highlight of it. It was kind of just an ingredient. And I was like, I really want a like bean focused recipe. And I want it to be like a hot weather recipe. Like no one wants to make tortellini soup in June. So then I remembered that my mom has a delicious, simple recipe for three bean salad. And I know that we see three bean salad at like picnics all the time. And it sometimes it can be lame. Um, but hers is really, really good. And it's super simple. Um, so basically what you do is it calls for um, fresh green beans, uh, red kidney beans, and then she either uses garbanzo beans or cannellini beans, depending on what you feel like. So you really quickly steam the green beans for like three to five minutes just to get them um, a little cooked. And then you rinse them quickly under cold water to stop the cooking process. So they're just like bright green, still a little crunchy. Set those aside. And then in a bowl, you whisk together um, a couple teaspoons of Dijon mustard, a couple tablespoons of sugar, and a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Whisk it until the sugar dissolves. And then you whisk in half a cup of olive oil. Basically, then you just throw in the green beans, um, which, oh, you usually you should cut them in half if they're big. Um, the rinsed and drained kidney beans and the rinsed and drained garbanzo or cannellini beans. Um, chop up a quarter cup of fresh parsley and toss that in. Salt and pepper to taste. And then chill in the fridge for at least an hour before serving. And um, I make this all the time in the summer to take places. Um, I'm going to make it this weekend. I made it a ton last year and it is just, um, really good. And I, you could probably do more with it if you wanted to throw in variations. Like I was just thinking, Beth, when you mentioned feta, it's like, oh, you could like have some feta in there that would be delicious. I'm sure you could mix up the beans if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's good. Um, it works well um, because without any additions, it is vegan. So that's nice. Um, yeah, goes great as a side dish for summer meals. So that is what I made. Nice. We, yeah. uh, my husband makes, uh, likes to make it all summer long and, but not that kind of dressing is so I'm curious and I think I would like to try that because I'm not as I'm not crazy about it but I eat it and no I'll, I like the idea with the parsley too and definitely make it yeah this is way different than the bean salad that I'm used to I think from what I'm trying to remember like what my family bean salad is and I think they're all of the beans that we use are canned. So I'm really loving the idea that there's some fresh green beans in there. That sounds really good. And then I was also thinking you could mess with the herbs. So like you put some basil in there, just whatever fresh you had on hand. And yeah, I'm going to make this. Sounds awesome. Really good. Takes Twist on seconds. classic. Love it. Yeah. 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 And you know, dill would be good too. Some fresh Ooh, dill. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would be good. Super easy to throw together. Um, the hardest part is like quickly steaming the green beans. So <laughs> no problem. Very cool. Good. Good. All right. Well, uh, thank you for watching Recipe Share. And be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about. And feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time on Recipe Share. And we are looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share, share a little recipe with Recipe Share.